what's good with it guys? It's your boy Gorgeous Cat 392 and we're bringing you guys a very, very exciting video today. We're actually just heading over to Scott's right now and we're gonna go get the Texas Speed Custom Grind Cam installed on the 392 Stroker. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's also gonna be just a crazy experience for myself just because I haven't done stuff like this before. So if you guys are interested in the Texas Speed Cam and how it's, how it's gonna run on this car, Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button if you guys enjoy the video. You guys know that helps me out so much. Anyways guys, let's go over there. Let's get the cam installed. It's gonna be a lot of fun. to install the new cam into the Hemi engine. Uh, this is the new Texas Speed billet cam. Uh, it looks to be a, a coated cam with an oil slinger. One of the things I wanted to talk to people about, which is something kind of important, especially if you're kind of an old guy like myself that is used to building engines, one of the things that you use is, is an assembly loop. Uh, and you can talk to people going back forever and everybody uses an assembly loop. One of the big ones that we use is like this one right here. Now this is an assembly loop that's, you know, 60, 70 years old. I mean, people have been using it forever and it is a great assembly loop. What they don't tell you is, is, is that with today's engines, if you look real close, you can see the screen. This is an MDS uh solenoid. solenoid and you can see that tight little screen on there it's also on this vvt which is plugged in so you can't see it but it's got the same screens on it that this does and the problem is 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 that these screens are so tight that when you use this assembly lube it literally cakes on the sides of the screen and then it it, it doesn't allow any oil to go through and that's kind of a big deal when you're talking about putting a cam in that you cannot use the regular old assembly lube uh, that everybody's been using for cams for decades so what we're going to use is, is we're going to just use oil and the other reason why it's okay to just use oil is because this is a roller cam uh, most of the old cams had uh, regular flat tappets is what they're called and they would actually chew and eat themselves into the lobe and actually break in, as they say. Well, there's no break in with a roller cam. It's just go for it. So we are going to just use some Schaefer's uh, high quality oil here and start uh, gobbing the oil on the whole thing. Making a big mess, but that's okay because the uh, cam's more expensive than the mess. I'm flicking it everywhere. It's okay to make a big mess with oil. As long as it's lube, nobody cares. Super cleaning the floor is always cheaper than a new camshaft. <laughs> that is the hole right there that works with this pin. So you want to line up your, your gap there with your pin. Uh -uh. That's the new one. All right, put the new one in. Stretch to yield bolt. Need a new one every time. Should we Loctite that? We are not. We are not tightening that down. We are just using it to installation. Installation. So as you put the cam in, you want to keep keep it up and centered. Now go real slow. See these bearings are aluminum, and if you smack them. It'll actually move them, and if you let the cam bounce up and down as it goes in violently, 
it can actually uh, make a nick in here that will tear up your lifters or tear up a bearing. So you want to go in pretty slow. Obviously, once you get closer to the end, uh, you're not going to be able to hold up the nose that well like what we're doing. And that's why we have a gear on here. Just take it nice and easy. So I'm pushing on the bottom and pulling on the top, and that lifts the cam on the back side. So sometimes you have to go and spin them to get them to go in the rest of the way. Is a tight clearance. Now we're going to take that uh, pulley off. The only reason why we have that on there is just to help to get the cam in. So we are now going to put on the hardened retainer plate. This will hold the camshaft in place. You can see that it's countersinked to match the bolts, so there's no way you can uh, mess up which side it goes on. Well, you probably could, but it'd be pretty bad. Now, this is all hardened metal that we're putting together right now, and you need to have a forged bolt in order to retain all of this, especially as small as they are. So whenever you're using a hardened bolt like this that doesn't stretch, you need to use Loctite. And the Loctite will uh, lock the bolt into place and not allow it to come out being a hardened bolt. Robbie yelling at me all the time. He's starting to give me a complex. Well, the one you always need is usually a 25, hey, and he doesn't broke, have a 25. You, you broke every so one like of them I bought. Toolbox. I mean, geez, this is wor the worst than a 10 millimeter. Like a Harbor Freight mechanic going on over here. <laughs> what this is, isn't it? <laughs> this thing's going to blow up when we start it up. What are you talking about? <laughs> going to blow up the fucking tires. <laughs> blow up the dyno. <laughs> Blow up the transmission, blow up the rear end. Blow up Fatty's Corvette. <laughs> I can't even breathe. So go ahead and tighten these uh, T30s on this uh, retaining plate to 20 foot pounds or 250 inch pounds of torque. Kind of gets a little scary. So we've, we're doing a replacement cam, so we're not going to add the phase limiting block back to the VVT upper pulley. Uh, and what this does VVT wise is, is there's a spring in there. And what that does is, is it allows this piece here to move back and forth when this solenoid opens and shuts. And what that does is, is it retards the timing. And when you have a really high lift cam and you retard the timing as much as you would with a smaller stock cam, it puts the exhaust valve really close to the piston. And that causes the piston to hit the valve, the exhaust valves when that goes. <clears throat> so what you do is, is, is you take one of these uh, blocks that comes in the kit, and this is a locking kit. And what this lock does is, is it keeps these springs right here from just basically exploding and going all over the place and holding this whole thing in place so that you can add the block. To do that, you turn it over and you use a Torx bit to take out these uh, bolts. You gotta be really careful with those. It's really easy to strip those, and really easy to break those, and you can't buy those separately, which we found out the hard way. But, uh, after this plate comes up, and it really doesn't come off completely, kind of swings off on one bolt, then you add the, the, uh, the block inside there that limits how far it can swing. And then uh, you put this plate back on, and then you take this lock back off of it, 
and that's the end of the VVT. So what we're doing right now is, is we're going to line up the uh, upper and lower pulleys uh, for cam timing. You'll notice if you look closely here, there's a dot right there on the teeth. And that dot is going to line up with the chain on the double side. When you look at the chain, it has a double slot and the other side's a single slot. So you're going to line up your double slot like so, right with the dot in between there. Just like that. And then on the top, you're going to line up a single dot with a, a gash in there. It's really hard to see. You can see that right there. We actually painted it because it's hard to see the tooth. Yep, so that color right, right there. Yep, that color right there. And then when you put the, can, uh, the upper one on, it's going to line up just like that, slot to slot. Yep. And one of the things that you need to do before you actually get started on all of this is, is make sure that your crankshaft is in the right location. If you notice, when we slip this on here like this, So our dot, which is a little bit difficult to see, but our dot's right here. And your dot needs to be straight down. So at this point what we're going to do is, is we're going to clock the crank and then we're going to clock the camshaft so that the crank is straight down on the mark and the cam is straight up on the mark. And then we're going to start our chain. Okay, so we've got our upper pulley clocked and our chain on. As you can see, both of the notches line up. We're going to put our bolt in here with some Loctite and blue, not red or green, because we want to take it apart again someday. I think people like to use red. It's also Loctite. It has to be a brand new bolt every time that's a stretched yield bolt. So it has to be replaced every time you take it apart. We are not going to try and torque it down right now because it's all going to move around a ton and it's just not the right time. So we're just going to uh, run our bolt down until it's 21 millimeters, by the way. 21 millimeters? Yeah. The cam is so sloppy, as you can see, the chain moves around all over the place on that lower pulley. The next part's pretty important because you want to, one, line up your, your notch right here with the hole on your cam and on That's your gear. Yep. Then, after you do that, run your chain up like so. And then this is the actual important part that nobody ever talks about. That is, is that we're going to put, we're going to put a zip tie around this cam chain to hold it into place. Because what happens is, is, is that when you put on your timing glides that hold all of this together, it will uh, push the chain left and right, and then you'll lose timing. We had the dealer do this. We even did this ourselves a few times. So you go and you zip tie this baby like so. And while it's zip tied, it can't possibly lose time. It's still right at the bottom. And it's still right at the top. Then, when we take our glides and we push it against the chain on one side or the other, it can't pull the chain around and lose time at the bottom. Loctite? Yeah, I was just going to set it up there for a second. This right here, this is the spring-loaded piece that actually holds the chain timing. And... As you can see, we put a pin in it. That's the lock pin, so you have to compress this by hand and then shove your pin in. Then, once this goes back on, you pull the pin out, and this spring that's in here holds the chain at the right tension.
10 millimeter tightens these guide bolts. Okay, so now we've got our glide on that's a fixed glide that's on the engine there and, it does, and it's not spring-loaded. And then uh, now we're going to put on our spring-loaded one that's uh, held in place by the pin with, of course, lots of Loctite. Then, normally at this point, you always want to double check your top marks, and our top mark is in place, and our bottom mark is in, is off. See that? It moved. The dot belongs right there. So, that means that we need to already uh, move it back around, because it just right bumps so there. much. That's right. Yep. So, we're going to take this back off, and we're going to move that. So you can see how easy it is to mess up timing. Even with a zip tie on there trying to hold it, it still moved on us. We now you can see that the dot is exactly where it's supposed to be. Right there. We also cut the other zip tie loose. It was just cut the other zip tie loose and adjust the chain a little bit and then re-squeeze it with another zip tie is what we did to fix it. And we can see that the top is right where it needs to be. Our glide is on and our tensioner is on, so it's now ready to remove the pin. We just pull that pin right out and you can watch that tensioner uh, go right against the chain. You know, usually. <laughs> and then we'll cut this off and voila, there's all of your timing. Still on. And it's still on at the top and it's still on at the bottom. Yep. Not using a zip tie, this is nightmarish. Also, a little side note, as soon as you turn the engine, if you decide to turn the engine from this point on, the marks will never line up again. So if you try to turn it over to line it up, they will not line up again. Alright folks, that's going to end the video for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.